Welcome, friends. I'm Marie Shuffle, back from a necessary break with more astrological forecasts for you. Although it's not until Halloween, yes, October 31st, Halloween, that Mars goes retrograde, Earthlings will be feeling its effects months ahead of time. This is typical of Venus and Mars retrograde periods. The real action takes place before the planet goes retrograde. As the planet appears to be slowing down, approaching the position at which it appears to stop and move backwards. Mars retrograde can inflate a situation with a sense of urgency. And as it also tends to inflate egos, aggressive moves by both ordinary citizens and world leaders become more likely. Mars retrograde can bring retribution for past wrongful deeds, but it is more likely to favor a bullying aggressor, especially if other players in the situation don't step up to the plate and confront the aggressor out of an excess of caution. But this is the trap that Mars retrograde can lure you into. It looks like you're winning when actually you've royally screwed up. Some world leaders are more susceptible to the charms of Mars retrograde. Here's a question for you. Which world leaders are most likely to beat their chest and burn down the house under any Mars retrograde? Any idea who takes the lead in this dubious distinction? My analysis of past Mars retrograde periods, especially in the past 10 years, shows that although Donald Trump and Mohammed bin Salem are runners-up, it's Vladimir Putin, Russia's president, who is the global player most likely to stir things up under Mars retrograde. And as Russia has been massing troops on the Ukrainian border for almost a year now, since the spring of 2021, does astrology show that Putin and Russia will continue to earn their dubious distinction by invading Ukraine? Let's take a look at what was happening in the heavens the last time Russia messed with Ukraine, back in 2014, to see if any patterns repeat in 2022. First, just a quick timeline of events in 2014. This timeline is also in the description for this video. True to Mars' style of impulsiveness and speed, Crimea was invaded, overtaken, and absorbed into the Russian Federation in only 23 days. Now let's look at the astrology. Russia invaded Ukraine and annexed Crimea in 2014, eight years ago, which, for those who know their cycles, means Venus went retrograde in the late degrees of Capricorn back then, just as she did in December 2021. Venus went retrograde at 28 degrees Capricorn on December 22, 2013. At that time, Russia's progressed Venus, 19 degrees Sagittarius, was conjunct natal Mars, also at 19 degrees Sagittarius. Venus went direct at 13 degrees Capricorn on February 1st in 2014. So she made her direct station as she aligned with the transiting T-square of Jupiter and Cancer, Uranus and Aries, and Pluto and Capricorn which was the major transiting configuration at that time. Note that Venus was conjunct transiting Pluto, 12 degrees Capricorn, and natal Uranus, 13 degrees Capricorn. And Venus-Pluto always means there is a security arrangement between two people or countries. Whether the arrangement is consciously admitted and legally defined or is just implied, or assumed subconsciously, with all the manipulation that can bring. 
Transiting Jupiter went direct at 10 degrees Cancer on March 7th in 2014, conjunct Russia's natal south node. In the 11th house, as it was forming the T-square with transiting Uranus and Pluto. Russia was the aggressor in this conflict, so note that this T-square, especially the Jupiter-Pluto opposition, aligned with the natal nodes at the time that the conflict reached a climax. And from January 8th through February 11th, 2014, which was during the buildup to the invasion and annexation of Crimea, transiting Saturn at 21 to 23 degrees Scorpio was conjunct Russia's natal Venus-Pluto conjunction. In this case, the Venus-Pluto conjunction indicated that a grab for property equated a grab for security, as the deeper interpretation of Venus-Pluto aspects is that of a security contract whether conscious or subconscious, between parties of unequal status. Here the action was motivated by fear, as shown by Saturn. Mars went retrograde at 27 degrees, 31 minutes Libra, on March 2nd in 2014, in Russia's third house. It was squaring the progressed sun, 26 degrees Capricorn. On the same day, transiting Ceres at 1 degree 50 minutes Scorpio and retrograde was conjunct the transiting North Node, also at 1 degree Scorpio and in the third house. Ceres is very significant when looking at situations involving invasion or immigration, as Ceres indicates movement across borders. Ceres went retrograde on February 27th, the day that Russian soldiers moved into Crimea. Let's look at the configurations to Putin's sunrise chart in 2014. The transiting T-square of Jupiter and Cancer, Uranus and Aries, and Pluto and Capricorn aligned with Putin's natal sun, 13 degrees Libra. As his son is involved, he saw his actions as fulfilling destiny, not just his own, but a wider destiny. Note that Mars was slowing down to its retrograde station as it passed over his natal sun in 2014. Transiting Mercury went direct on February 28th at 18 degrees Aquarius, conjunct his natal north node. And when Mars went retrograde on March 2nd, it was square his progressed Venus, 26 degrees Capricorn. And Russia's progressed Sun was also at 26 degrees Capricorn. Venus is the ruler of Libra, Putin's sun sign. So he was feeling overly confident and compelled to act. In 2014, the major transiting configuration was the Jupiter-Uranus-Pluto T-square in cardinal signs. This T-square aligned with Russia's natal Uranus 13 degrees Capricorn, and transiting Venus went direct at 13 degrees Capricorn on February 1st. Also, transiting Jupiter went direct at 10 degrees Cancer on March 6th, conjunct Russia's natal south node. For Putin's chart, transiting Mercury went direct on February 28th at 18 degrees Aquarius, conjunct his natal north node. In 2022, the major transiting configuration is the Saturn-Uranus square, which is within one to two degree orb of exactness in October in fixed signs. This aligns with Russia's natal Venus-Pluto conjunction in Scorpio, forming a T-square. On July 29, 2022, transiting Jupiter goes retrograde at 8 degrees Aries, forming a T-square with Russia's progressed nodes, 8 degrees Capricorn Cancer. 
And Saturn turns direct in 2022 on October 23rd at 18 degrees Aquarius, conjunct Putin's natal north node. From the configurations to his chart, Putin had milder ambitions towards Ukraine and by extension, NATO and the West in 2014 than he does in 2022. In 2014, it was Mercury making its direct station on his natal north node. But in 2022, it's Saturn making its direct station on his north node. This is a much more powerful and serious influence. Now Putin wants to crush any opportunity for the West to further encroach on what he considers to be Russian territory. But he wants something even more important also, that he does not admit publicly, which I'll reveal at the end of this video. What about Ukraine's chart in 2014? First of all, take note of an important point for Ukraine's chart. Progressed Uranus went direct on May 3rd, 2017 at 9 degrees 50 minutes Capricorn. Stationary positions of progressed planets, whether they are when the planet is stationing retrograde or direct, become a very sensitive point for that chart. Transits and progressions for November 21st, 2013 to Ukraine's natal chart, the date that the Euro Maiden protests began, show the importance of that progressed Uranus stationary direct point in Capricorn, transiting Pluto, 9 degrees 56 minutes Capricorn, was almost exactly conjuncted. Note that Uranus is the co-ruler of the Aquarius Ascendant, the Ascendant represents the people. And with Pluto on that sensitive Uranus point, the people were determined to make change happen for their country. We'll see why this is so important for 2022 later in this video. Pluto formed a T-square with progressed Mars at 9 degrees Libra in the 8th house, opposing transiting Uranus 9 degrees Aries retrograde. November 21st was the exact day of Ukraine's progressed waxing square of the sun and moon, with the progressed moon, 22 degrees, 33 minutes Sagittarius, in square to the progressed sun, 22 degrees, 33 minutes Virgo, and transiting Mars, 21 degrees Virgo, which were both near natal Mars, 25 degrees Virgo, in the seventh house. This transit of Mars to the progressed Sun-Moon square, as it aligned with natal Mars, was the astrological trigger within the context of Pluto conjunct progressed Uranus. Throughout the protest and invasion annexation period of several months, transiting Saturn was square Ukraine's natal moon at 22 degrees 55 minutes Aquarius. Saturn went retrograde at 23 degrees Scorpio on March 3rd. Note that Saturn is the other co-ruler of Aquarius. Both the moon and the ascendant of a country's chart represent the people, the citizens of the country. Saturn is government, and here the people were in conflict with their own government under Yanukovych and at the time of other very volatile configurations. Note also in 2013, in the build-up to the protests, Transiting Neptune in the very early degrees of Pisces was opposing the natal sun, zero degrees Virgo. Neptune in a harsh angle to the natal or progressed sun drains energy from the entity that that chart represents. Neptune, which is still casually floating its way through Pisces, is important for the events of 2022. In 2014, the transiting T-square of Pluto and Capricorn 
Jupiter in Cancer, and Uranus in Aries, was interacting with Ukraine's progressed Uranus and progressed Mars. In 2022, the transiting Saturn-Uranus square interacts with Ukraine's natal Moon-Pluto square, with Uranus opposing Pluto and Saturn conjoining the Moon. This is muckier than 2014, and the stakes are higher, as Pluto, which rules oil and gas pipelines and infrastructure, is involved. President Zelensky wasn't Ukraine's president in 2014, so we can only analyze his chart for 2022. Transiting Neptune in Pisces forms a T-square to his natal opposition of Jupiter 27 degrees Gemini to Ceres 26 degrees Sagittarius. Mars turns retrograde at 25 degrees Gemini, conjunct his natal Jupiter. This indicates that although Mr. Zelensky is clever enough to use his Western alliances to outfox Mr. Putin for a while, he will end up suffering from his alliances overpromising and underdelivering. We should turn means that he too will run a good line of obfuscation and end up disappointing his citizens. This T square is also another indication of extreme deception by others. He may be a good actor, but his is not the chart of a nefarious deceiver. Now let's take a deeper look at the configurations for 2022 so we can determine the events and their timeline. First of all, just a general observation. Mars makes its retrograde station at 25 degrees 36 minutes Gemini. So it opposes Russia's natal part of fortune, 25 degrees, 29 minutes Sagittarius, and its natal Ceres, 24 degrees Sagittarius. This opposition to the part of fortune is a very bad sign that any conflict under this Mars retrograde will be detrimental to Russia's interests and could spin out of control. And Mars activates Ceres, the asteroid associated with movement across borders. From mid-March 2022 through April 2023, transiting Neptune at 23 to 27 degrees Pisces is square Russia's natal series 24 degrees Sagittarius. The jupiter neptune conjunction at 23 degrees 58 minutes Pisces on April 16th also squares Ceres. Note that transiting Mars and Saturn are passing over Russia's descendant at the same time. This combination is a broad indication of a covert invasion, implemented secretly and gradually, which calls to mind Russia's tactic in 2014 of sending troops without insignia over the Ukrainian border. Ukrainian leadership should be cautious and on the outlook for such deception in April 2022 as the transiting Jupiter-Neptune conjunction opposes Ukraine's natal Mars and progressed Mercury, and transiting Ceres in Gemini forms a T-square with them. This also indicates that something, or perhaps some people, are slipping over the border. In late April, progressed Mars, 15 degrees Libra, forms an exact T-square with the progressed nodes in Capricorn Cancer, indicating a shift in a conflict situation. There is a total lunar eclipse on May 16, 2022, at 25 degrees, 17 minutes Scorpio. So it forms a T-square with transiting Saturn, 25 degrees Aquarius. It also forms an exact Grand Cross with Russia's ascendant-descendant axis, 
25 degrees, 16 minutes, Leo Aquarius. This May 16th eclipse is triggered on March 4th, 2022, only two days prior to the new moon at 14 degrees Pisces. The action to take Ukraine starts in the first week of March 2022, but it's done in such a way that the situation is muddled and excuses can be made. There is a harsh response by the international community near May 16th. On May 29th, 2022, the transiting Mars-Jupiter conjunction at 3 degrees 19 minutes Aries in Russia's 8th house is in conjunct the natal moon, 3 degrees Virgo, and square the natal sun, 3 degrees Capricorn. Russian leadership finds they are strongly opposed, and they may overreact when they feel blocked or stymied. Note also in May 2022, the transiting south node is conjunct Russia's natal Venus-Pluto conjunction at 22 degrees Scorpio. For Ukraine's chart, the Mars-Jupiter conjunction falls in the very wide first house, opposing the progressed sun, zero degrees Libra. And transiting Neptune opposes progressed Mars, 25 degrees, 7 minutes Virgo. This opposition is exact on May 25th. This Mars-Neptune configuration confirms that Putin dangles a provocation, then steps back. Putin does something to confuse Ukraine, but doesn't make an outright attack. But Putin does pull back from direct invasion and conflict with the West as Saturn goes retrograde on June 6th at 25 degrees 15 minutes Aquarius, right on Russia's descendant, 25 degrees 16 minutes Aquarius. Note that the moon in Leo is opposing Saturn as it turns retrograde. This is Putin's deception, that he has reconsidered and has pulled away. But there are troop movements across the Russian-Ukrainian border. Russia is just lying in wait. Very near August 2nd, under the Mars-Uranus North Node Triple Conjunction, Putin repeats his provocation of late May. Note that on August 2nd, Transiting Neptune, now retrograde, is back at 25 degrees 7 minutes Pisces, exactly opposing Ukraine's natal Mars. But the provocation is more blatant this time. It's also possible that things don't go as expected, as the triple conjunction at 18 degrees Taurus forms a T-square to Putin's natal nodes and progressed Mars. Also, transiting Jupiter at 8 to 9 degrees Aries forms a T-square with Russia's progressed nodes, a similar configuration to what occurred in 2014. Ukraine's natal chart shows the possibility of aggressive threat or invasion on August 2nd. The transiting triple conjunction of Mars, Uranus, and the North Node in the third house opposes natal Pluto and progress Ceres in Scorpio in the ninth house. The same day, transiting Saturn, 22 degrees Aquarius, is conjunct the natal moon, 22 degrees Aquarius, in the first house. And they oppose progressed Venus, 23 degrees, for 23 degrees Leo. This shows heavy-handed pressure on Ukraine from a bigger opponent, but it also lends weight to Ukraine's own army, as Cancer Moon rules the sixth house of Ukraine's armed forces. Note also that the progressed moon, nine degrees Aries, squares progressed Uranus. 
triggering that sensitive point. And they align with the transiting Moon-Jupiter opposition. Transiting Neptune, 25 degrees, 7 minutes, Pisces retrograde, exactly opposing Ukraine's natal Mars, confirms that the coercion is subtle and not a direct aggression. In fact, it may be a ploy to manipulate Ukraine into reacting in such a way that an aggressive response by the other party can be justified, under the pretext that it was Ukraine who attacked first. Note also that transiting Neptune has been opposing progressed Mercury for some time. Mercury rules the Gemini cusp of the fourth house of territory and security. So Ukraine has been subject to a gradual wearing down of its defenses in ways that it is not aware of. Because of the Mars-Uranus configuration, the events of late July and early August 2022 could put this conflict on a very different trajectory. And it's very possible that Western nations, probably under NATO, could get involved militarily. Just a quick look at NATO's chart shows that Mars retrograde station occurs right on NATO's progressed Sun, 25 degrees Gemini, and NATO Uranus, 26 degrees Gemini. The Uranus-Mars North Node triple conjunction of August 2nd lands in the first house, which is ruled by Aries Mars, indicating that NATO may feel compelled to act militarily. Note also that when Mars returns to direct motion on January 12, 2023, at 8 degrees Gemini, it will be conjunct progressed Mercury and opposing natal Chiron, 8 degrees Sagittarius. This increases the pressure for NATO to act as both Mars retrograde and direct stations hit volatile points in NATO's chart. And Mercury rules the Virgo cusp of the sixth house of the armed forces. On October 31st, transiting Mars at its retrograde station squares Ukraine's natal Mars at 25 degrees Virgo. The sign Virgo is intercepted in the seventh house of open enemies. The same day, progressed Ceres is exactly conjunct natal Pluto at 17 degrees, 45 minutes, Scorpio. So they oppose transiting Uranus and are square transiting Saturn, a big indication of a bully on their border. But the involvement of the Saturn-Uranus square clearly shows what I forecast in my Venus retrograde video concerning this square configuration. Some will find themselves as pawns in a standoff between two authoritarian figures in their lives. Russia has transiting Jupiter and Neptune in the 8th house in Pisces from late October to mid-December 2022. Things can easily go awry with what one desires to happen with this pair in Pisces. It's an indication of having more than you can handle, as well as an indication of deception. Also on October 31st, a yod forms of transiting Chiron, 13 degrees Aries, Ceres, 13 degrees Virgo, and the South Node, 13 degrees Scorpio. Chiron in Aries opposes Putin's natal sun, 13 degrees Libra. Putin may find himself in a trap under this configuration, a trap of his own making. A yod consists of two 150-degree angles connected to an apex of a 60-degree angle. 
It is a configuration of imbalance or a need to adjust. And in this case, it denotes a miscalculation. Mars is greatly influencing this yod. Note that Mars rules both Aries, the sign which holds Chiron, and Scorpio, the sign which holds the south node. This is a sunrise chart for Putin, as I don't have a confirmed true time of birth. But the points involved are our relative to the exact numerical degree of Putin's natal sun, so it's safe to draw some conclusions based on house positions. It's the position of Ceres, which reveals how Mr. Putin has miscalculated. It is in the 11th house of group associations. It is 30 degrees behind Putin's natal sun, so in effect, he cannot see or has disregarded what has been developing in this respect. Remember, Ceres rules movement across borders. Others can stealthily move their armed forces over borders too. This yod also affects NATO's chart. NATO has a natal Sun-Neptune opposition at 13, 14 degrees Aries Libra, which is being triggered by transiting Chiron. Putin's natal Sun falls on NATO's natal Neptune. There is blatant lying going on here on the part of some party, and NATO knows it. In fact, they may have proof of it. And although they may have been reluctant to admit they had such proof before this time, now, with Mars turning retrograde, in NATO's third house of documentation and communication, they feel pressed to relieve and act on what they know. Or perhaps it's what they think they know. Neptune is a slippery dude and is rarely a beneficial influence for most people, except the most spiritually enlightened. This is the same day that Mars turns retrograde, and Mars is triggering NATO's progressed sun and natal Uranus. The sun rules the sign Leo, and the complementary sign is Aquarius, ruled by Uranus and Saturn. In mundane astrology, these signs are associated with group associations, which is Aquarius, and their individual members, which is Leo. One member of NATO in particular becomes involved in this conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The presence of transiting Saturn in Aquarius indicates that this one member has the backing of all NATO members for whatever action they take. I won't say which country I think this is, but several indications show that it is one with great authority. Note also that Progress Ceres, 29 degrees Leo, is conjunct natal Saturn, also 29 degrees Leo. From mid-November through mid-December 2022, transiting Ceres in Virgo opposes both transiting Jupiter and Neptune, thus forming a T-square with Russia's natal Ceres. This is very significant as both transiting and natal Ceres are involved and Ceres, as we now know, has a definite association with movement across borders. And as the two planets of deceit and subterfuge, Jupiter and Neptune are involved and Mars is retrograde at this time, all indications point to the last four months of 2022 as the time of Russia's outright infiltration of another country. Any time from October 2nd to October 23rd, 2022, Russia makes a hard grab for Ukraine and accomplishes it. This takeover may involve a political coup, as transiting Uranus is moving through Ukraine's fourth house of opposition to the established government of that country. There is a transiting T-square of Mars, Neptune, and Mercury in late September 
and early October, and Mercury goes direct on October 3rd at 24 degrees 12 minutes Virgo, conjunct Ukraine's natal Mars. If Putin hoped to take over Ukraine decisively with an invasion of mass troops, he may find that Ukraine is able to thwart them just as well. Mars at its retrograde station opposes Putin's natal Mars and progressed Sun, and Mars is the ruler of his solar seventh house of opponents. So Putin may find that others fight back vigorously, and there is heavy retribution due to transiting Chiron in Aries, opposing his natal sun. It could be hard to determine the true facts, as both sides are playing dirty. He's capable of overreach through late July through November. Public opinion, whether domestic or foreign, will prove to be against him. October 23rd indicates a goal accomplished, however, as Saturn, at 18 degrees, 35 minutes Aquarius, turns direct on his natal north node and progressed Mars, both at 18 degrees Aquarius. Obfuscation and outright deceit make it difficult for the international community to intervene, as shown by the Yod configuration discussed earlier but it also makes them more determined to do so. It is this Yod configuration that points to the conflict continuing well past the time of what Putin seems to regard as his achievement. In December 2022 and early January 2023, transiting Saturn, 21 degrees Aquarius, will square Russia's natal Venus-Pluto conjunction. This indicates severe sanctions, most likely on infrastructure related to oil, which Pluto rules, which could mean a cancellation of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline agreement. Sanctions and changes to Nord Stream 2 are most likely around January 23, 2023, as transiting Venus and Saturn conjoin Russia's descendant 25 degrees Aquarius and Mars has returned to direct motion 10 days earlier. As I pointed out at the beginning of this video, aggressive action taken under Mars retrograde can veer off in unintended directions. So it may be wise to remember that Russia's covert invasion of Ukraine and annexation of Crimea in 2014 triggered a big sell-off in the Russian stock market on March 3rd, 2014, and the ruble fell to a record low, which the Russian bank sought to counteract by raising interest rates to their highest level since 1998. With inflation now climbing around the globe, a further invasion of Ukraine could have severe financial repercussions for Russia, and not just in terms of Western sanctions. Remember, transiting Neptune is moving through Pisces and Russia's eighth house of credit markets. Russian leadership might want to contemplate why they feel so driven to grab Ukraine, especially at this time. Putin's primary motive in a takeover of Ukraine is not to stick it to the West or boost his domestic popularity. Yes, he is concerned about Russia's security, but not so much in relation to U.S. and Europe as one might think, or that he wants to make others believe. His real area of concern is China. Putin wants to bolster Russia's influence in Asia in order to stave off China, which, as I will show in another video, is the country he truly fears and which he sees as the biggest threat to Russia. Because, hey, China is Russia's BFF, biggest frenemy forever. Interestingly, Afghanistan's situation plays into this, as I will explain in another video. Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe and get notified when I release more videos on Mars Retrograde 
and other topics. Bye for now.